What's up, Foot Clan? Great show for you today. We're going to be jumping into Ride or Die. I was perfect last week. What do you expect? And then we're going to talk some NFL news, Thursday night preview, mailbag. Got some important questions to answer. And uh, at the end of the show, a very interesting twist on this week's DraftKings Challenge. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome to Wednesday, November 30th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, two-man show today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman, is don't know where here. he is, can't find him. No, we were looking for him all morning, uh, and we decided we, we've got to record this show. I checked the fridge and a couple of the waste bins, not there. Under the doormat. Uh, a lot of times that's a place people leave stuff valuable. Right. Um, and they could not find him. I, right. checked, I checked the bathrooms. Did you, Brooks? Thank that's you. That's usually yeah. where he is. Yeah. Well, that's... that's. But that's, my understanding more is... more your domain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my <laughs> home base. Um, uh, can't tag me while I'm there. But uh, yeah, he should be back and found on uh, Monday. <laughs> yeah, so Michael will be out for a couple days. Don't worry about it. We got you. Mm -hmm. Jason Moore is here. And he Jay is, Grizz holding it down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, his uh, his Bears didn't have Justin Fields out there this past week. And, uh, well, that hurt. Yeah, they said Just no problem. We could still lose. Yeah. Uh, we have a fun show today. The current Megalobowl leader, by the way, Bodogs. Bodogs. 23-1-0, 1,936 points. So, in the mix, as we head towards the fantasy football playoffs, funny story, my sister never had an interest whatsoever in, uh, to my knowledge, in the NFL, really, sports, fantasy football, gets convinced to join a fantasy league at the beginning of the year by her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. It has overtaken her. Really? Yes, she is now, I get texts from my, my little sister. She shows up at the, we had a family uh, like card night uh, on Sunday. She shows up first two words out of her mouth with more excitement in her face than I could imagine. Josh Jacobs. Oh my goodness. That would be so amazing. So she's all in. And and I think it's it's the winning, right? Like she's winning oh, the league. Oh, for sure. That helps. She, she's winning the league. So so she's listening. She's listening to the Obviously. show. Obviously. You but, said she's winning. Yeah. and But yesterday, yesterday she... Uh, she learned something new about fantasy football. That there are playoffs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because she said, I go, I hope you're ready for ultimate pain. You know, you're, you've dominated. I think she has one loss on the year. She's got, a, you know, Jacobs and Henry and this great team. She just team. thinks it's a shoe in to win. And I go, I go, get ready for the ultimate fantasy football, you know, stress because the playoffs are coming. She goes, wait. If I do great all year long, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> well, it means you get in the playoffs like Bodogs over here. So, um, but Bodogs, the shark from 3D, from Jaws 3D. Yeah. And I'll also, shout out to Skunk League, who is uh, the highest scoring 24 and 0 team in the, Megalod in the Megalodon, Megala Bowl is what we call it. Um, Y'all going to lose. <laughs> so enjoy your ride. This was great. You're going to get to the playoffs. But I'm calling my shot right now. I'm taking the field. Versus those three. Versus those three. Especially because I'm going to be one of You're those. You're part of the field. I'm part of the field. Okay. So I'm coming for y'all. Uh, Spotify Live. Jason and I will be in the party room today. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Over on Spotify. Uh, make sure you listen in. Tune in. It'll be fun. Got the Thursday night preview today. Got news to talk about. Ride or die. We're going to be diving into the mailbag. 
jam-packed. Jam-packed show. So jam-packed that we added a quick question. All right. Uh, quick question is, who should make the Mount Rushmore of tough players to start or sit this year? Now, Jason, I have four answers from the Foot Clan, the highest, uh, the most popular answers okay. on Instagram. But I am, I'm curious if you agree with them or if you have some from your own list. Uh, the, the four that they gave were Cortland Sutton, which I super agree I with. I super agree with. He's the one that makes my personal route, Mount Rushmore off of this list. Okay. And then uh, Gabe Davis was another one. Uh, Alvin Kamara, which, look, I, I just happen to not have any Alvin Kamara shares in any league. So I don't think I relate to that one, but I get it. Like we've seen the numbers, the offense, everything. And then DJ Moore, who tantalizes into your lineup and then uh, destroys you. Yeah, he's always, he's always been a tough one, but it's been a lot easier to sit him this year than in years past. I, I would say after a couple of weeks, it was pretty easy to just put him on the bench, and if he, you know, one out of every four weeks has a good game, you're okay you, with it on the bench or on the waivers even. He had the they had the P, P J Walker resurgence though that brought him back into lineup. Well, right, like right now he's experiencing the Sam Darnold resurgence. Ah, that's going to bring him back into lineups incorrectly. Um, the number one for me when I was making my Mount Rushmore, it's Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, sure, is someone that you feel like you absolutely have to start. And there's good reason for it. He can do what no one else at the position could do. Which is cheat. But if you started him every single week, I'm pretty sure you have made massive mistakes because... He's hard because he's in the position of need. Right. So he's at, at tight end where it's like you can justify bad performances and then you're you're stuck in that spot where, okay, now his snap counts are up. So... It's always a story. Yeah, if he was a wide receiver, or, or n not necessarily scoring as a wide receiver, but like if there were as many options available as there are at wide receiver, I mean, nobody would be considering putting no. a, a, someone like Taysom Hill in their lineup just because he can do big things. It is so infrequent that uh, that would be my number one. I'd chisel a couple faces up there. Okay, let's hear them. Kyle Pitts, let's not forget that oh, struggle. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, in memorandum. Yeah, and then um, Brian Robinson, who I feel like uh, you you got him. You thought you had a starting running back. You kind of do sometimes. You kind of don't. I never know when the matchups. He seems to play well in different matchups that you, than you expect. Um, That's you got good. another face to I, chisel I have, up there. I have two more faces that I would want chiseled. One is Deontay Johnson. Because he hasn't been good, but he's great. And so it's tough. You go, well, he's so good. He's getting open. He's getting the targets. He's doing, you know, I drafted him highly. You would have rather played DJ Moore all year than Deontay Johnson, yeah, right? I mean, uh, you you probably get a couple wins that you wouldn't have. I don't think Deontay Johnson's floor being, you know, above five points really makes the difference between DJ Moore's uh, bad games, whether you win or lose, whereas DJ Moore's had a couple uh, weak, weak winners winning performances yeah. um, and then the other one is Devonta Smith who I think is oh that's a great one so talented he's so good I continue starting him I start him every week now that uh, you know I traded for him a couple weeks ago and I'm fine with that I'm fine taking my lumps but it's always like you're not it's just pretty inconsistent it's the only way to handle Devonta Smith I think I mean it's two years in a row where if you don't take that approach, you will be living in misery because you you got to take the bad with the good. You know, I think that takes him kind of off. Maybe he isn't really the hardest to start because that's the same with Gabe Davis. Like Gabe Davis and Devontae yes. Smith are players that you – it's not really a difficult decision. You start them because you want the massive performances. You're disappointed sometimes. Uh, but it's not at the level of a DJ Moore or a, a Taysom Hill where the majority of their performances are bad. You just need to take the lumps to get the uh, spoonfuls of sugar. Okay, yeah. I agree. I And, and you hope that they're not your uh, – honestly, I hope they're not my wide receiver two. No. You no. want them to be a flex uh, wide receiver three. Let's do some ride or die. Ride or Die, presented by Chevrolet.
Last week, yours truly was perfect. Ride, ride, die. That was great. Amon Ross St. Brown as a top 18 wide receiver finished at three. Zeke scoring a touchdown. Uh, Jason and I and Mike were all in on that on Thanksgiving, and he did. And then uh, <laughs> we got the layup with the Juwan Johnson top 10 tight end. He was tight end 69. <laughs> That's what I was going to So Mike uh, went down on that one. That was a funny one because we said – I believe you and I said you can move on wherever you want. We're going to choose against it, and Mike is contractually obligated to select. Yeah, yeah, he can't quit them uh, Saints tight ends, not mm -hmm. named Taysom Hill. Week 13 ride or die predictions. Brooks has put some together for us, Jason. Alvin Kamara, what do you got for us? All right, guys, at Tampa Bay, will he hit 10 fantasy points and half PPR? Okay, okay. He hit. 10.9 last week, is that right? Or is that That two was weeks two ago? weeks ago. Last week against San Francisco, he had four. Three weeks ago against Pittsburgh, he had six. Four weeks ago against Baltimore, he had 7.7. Uh. 7. So I completely understand why this line is where it's at. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a good defense. They are not the otherworldly shut-down defense that, uh, against running backs that they were um, the last two seasons, but they are still – a very difficult matchup currently on the season ranked number four I feel so disrespectful to Alvin Kamara to not ride with a measly 10 point line for him historically and yet I won't I'm going to this is such an important game for Tampa Bay yeah coming off the loss which was a comeback win by Cleveland I it's, it's at home I'm going to I'm gonna go die all right I am going to ride I'm going to ride not because I think Kamara has a special game, but because I believe that he is involved enough to get 10. This line is really good. This line is an easy one to pick and say, gosh, he's got to have 10 fantasy points. Last week, he did not get 10 fantasy points. He had seven targets for six receptions and finished with four fantasy points. That was because two fumbles in the game i don't think that happens this week i'm i am riding it's so on a 10 point line with alvin Kamara. yeah if he gets into the end zone at the one yard line last week he hits that line easily because that's but it's, an eight point swing it's just crazy though. three of the last four weeks yeah it would be die uh Al amari cooper which is um he's a really interesting name this week you get, against houston with uh voldemort at quarterback i was staring him down in dfs uh-huh for a long time trying to decide because it, it seems like the right matchup, but you just don't know where uh, Mr. Watson is going to be. What's the line you set it at, Brooksy? Top 12, fantasy wideout. No. I'm yeah. going to go die on this. Yeah, I, I am Dark going... wizard. <laughs> he brings a lot of variables in, and you would expect – in general, that the two hundred plus million dollar quarterback fully guaranteed would be better than the beef brisket Jacoby Brissett, but you just you don't know who he's going to target primarily. You don't know that it's going to be Amari Cooper. You don't know that he's not going to be rusty. And against the Houston Texans, we've talked about this, uh, you know, for the last month and a half, two months. That you just don't need to pass much. So if it doesn't happen early in the game, Nicholas Chubb should run all over this team I believe it could be a rainy game so I'm going to select die as well I do not believe that Amari Cooper will be a top 12 fantasy wide receiver and don't forget this is on the road and Amari Cooper so far on the road that them's his bad game and it's against Houston who shuts down statistically not actually quarterbacks and wide receivers like they are top six in both categories and it's just because you don't need it yeah once you're up two scores and it's, it's over. the second quarter you just run the ball a little more just a little more you don't th you still throw the ball and then you're up three scores and it's the second half and I was like I'm just gonna run it and I know that like Mike has been uh Donovan Peoples Jones's greatest advocate yes but like you said the variables of a new quarterback and I want to highlight the fact that and it's again it's coming out of a DFS glance David Bell has had five or more targets in three straight games. Rookies in the second half of the year begin to ascend, and his price in DFS is pennies. So you you look at that and say, hey, does he have a new favorite target for some reason? Uh, I don't think it's impossible 
with the snap counts the highest of the year, the targets the highest of the year, that David Bell could emerge over the back half of the year. I really liked David Bell as a third-round rookie uh, dynasty pick because of Voldemort and the future. Oh, he's the new Bell Tolan. I get I'm just it. giving it a go. It's his name. <laughs> I mean, math checks out. All right. So we both uh, we're both out on Cooper. Tyler Lockett against the Rams. Brooks wants to know will he score a touchdown because he's done it in four straight games. He's so good. I don't know if you saw last week. Uh, Mister DK Metcalf had fifteen targets, eleven receptions in that game. Uh, it was a shootout with the Raiders. Uh, I feel like I can't bet on a touchdown. So I'll, well, you're the you're Mister Touchdown. If anyone can bet on a touchdown, it's you. Well, you have they, the you know the the sight. I've got <laughs> I've got to follow my instincts here. Then I I think it's um I think it's a no. Well, then I'm definitely a no. I mean, okay, all at right. that point, I don't I don't question the wizard. I don't think so. I don't think he gets in there. Four straight games. I love this. So that means we've got a lot writing this week on Alvin Kamara. He's really our ride or die. All right. You're right about that, Mr. Moore. It makes me want to know if we should change another one, but we can leave it. We can move on. Uh, that was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. How how much progress did we make on you yesterday, Jason, in, with regards to making you a national soccer fan? A lot of progress. A lot of progress. A lot of progress. I expect to be a national soccer fan every four years. That's a, is that, that works for you, right? Yeah, oh, that works for me, baby. If you only had to watch three baseball games every four years, would you be a baseball fan? I do watch three baseball games every four years, probably. The World Series? Yeah, like if there's a Game 7 something, baseball. That's what this is. This is like infinite Game 7s in the World Cup. Yes, baseball sucks. But any sport, any activity with something so weighty where every moment matters, it doesn't matter. It could be a, a, a hammering wood competition. I agree. If the stakes are as high as they are in the World Cup, you just got to watch and wonder at all these human beings doing everything in their power, their life's work for this moment. It's just amazing to watch. You can't be a sports fan if you don't like those things. I agree. The word I used to describe to my kids last night as to why it was worth watching is gravity. Mm -hmm. The gravity of the situation, it doesn't matter what it is. I'll watch anything. My, uh, my youngest uh, came home last night. He told me that in their class they – turned on the end nice. of the game, and that's what they spent their time doing. I did hear people were getting pulled out of school. Kids were getting oh, taken really? out to watch that game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just put them in a school where they watch the games there. There you go. You found it. All right. Aaron Rodgers told the Pat McAfee show that he got good news with his scans. He plans on playing this week against the Bears. Okay. Did you see his press conference where they said, where do, where do you guys go from here? Or where do you go from here? And he said, home. <laughs> <laughs> Took it very literally. Uh, so Rogers back out there. I think Christian Watson is your lock right now. He's just on fire. Yeah. Doug like, Peterson. Oh, go ahead. Uh, against the bears. You just expect that there will be value to be had. Um, you, you can't bench Christian Watson right now. Uh, do we have an update on Najee Harris yet? I am seeing something from Ian Rappaport saying his status is up in the air. Still reevaluated with the abdominal injury. Did not suffer a major injury, it, uh, Rappaport is saying, uh, but we don't know about this week yet, so it's still early. i got to be honest with you. I'm real nervous every time I say abdominal. Oh, I know, because you, you messed it up early in the season. Mm -hmm. and it You became, can tell? Oh, can you, 100% I can tell. Because I'm worried about the abominable the snowman. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The yeah. abominable yeah. Uh, injury. injury. Yeah is a real problem for you no i you know we've all got our things I'll be, uh, you want to know one of my things it's like you with other words yeah, right <laughs> yes it's like me with other words you now <laughs> understand what it's like to live my life yeah. when when abominable uh injuries There's come always up. a little pause before i say it like can i get this right mine yeah mine is uh picket and pickens oh I yeah mean, I my, that. my brain cannot you can't do it every single time we're talking about the Steelers, and i want to mention one of them i can't 
my brain goes, what is pick, pick is one of them names picks. That's I'm telling you, I black out and I can't talk about these players. I just need to start using full names because I, if oh, I say Kenny help. Pickett yeah. or George Pickens, that's fine. But if I just start with pick, my brain goes you did that with to Mc, mush. You did that with McDaniel uh -huh. versus McDaniels uh -huh. for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it happens. Got a lot of these names. They're the, tough. It's like the Ghostbusters uh, streams are crossing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> right. Doug Peterson said Wednesday that he expects Travis Etienne to play Sunday against the Lions. Uh, uh, one week good. too late, brother. <laughs> uh, for you. For you, yes. For uh, most other Etienne managers, that's great news. The matchup against the Lions is you know great for fantasy points. They've been better against running backs lately. I did realize this year that the only thing worse than than having your players injured is doing the plethora of injuries early in the game. Oh yeah, like that, if I lose them midweek, that sucks. If you lose them at the end of a game, also yeah, sucks. I mean, whatever. Yeah, but you got a game. Yeah, I, I realized I had five guys that I started that got hurt before they scored fantasy points. Now, that's that's a bad feeling. Najee Harris, like we said, not a major injury. So the the waiver show that we did yesterday talking about Benny Snell, Jalen Warren's hamstring situation, continue to monitor. Uh, uh, you know, your waivers have probably gone through by the time you're listening to this. But no, uh, maybe if you took Jason's approach yesterday, which was minimal bids on a lot of players, uh, you're not out of luck. Speaking of the waiver wire and uh, players that still might be available, um, the Athletics' Matt Barrows believes Tevin Coleman could be the one to play a big role in the 49ers' backfield when Elijah Mitchell is gone. We talked about the fact that Jordan Mason was the next guy up, but he's a special teamer, and that doesn't necessarily mean he gets the shot. It could be Ty Davis-Price. We didn't really bring up Tev Tevin Coleman because he's on the practice squad, but having this report, waivers could – go and could clear and Tevin Coleman uh in a lot of these leagues isn't going to be picked up and I if I such a hard time with this one because I, I I know the team loves Ty Davis price and because of the special team situation he wasn't active but like if I had to make a bet now mm -hmm. right now and total touches I would go price Coleman Mason I would you're behind McCaffrey behind obviously. McCaffrey I would I would go Coleman first now I, I really would. I uh, I know Shanahan's got a history of doing stuff like this and, you know, call it loyalty or call it uh, ego. Uh, I'll call it ego um, where the glory is his. If he takes the, you know, the fourth string older guy and, and we've seen Tevin Coleman pushed into action before. So I would go Coleman price Mason. We both have Mason at the bottom, though, which means he's the dude. <laughs> Unless you look at him too long, and then he, yeah. yeah. Daniel Bellinger's supposed to be back for the Giants. Oh, really? I actually think that that sort of matters. They yeah. don't have a lot of pass catchers. He's uh, pretty talented. He was off to a great start. Yeah. Uh, rookie tight end looked the part. It was, seemed necessary to the offense. I was starting to use him in DFS, and then it was an unfortunate eye injury. I didn't realize he was back this year. I thought he was on the shelf. That's great. And then the Jets signed Jonathan Ward to the practice squad, uh, you know, Michael Carter's ankle injury, more depth at the position. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Thursday Night Breakdown. Get ready to watch the Patriots in primetime. They're going to have back-to-back -back primetime games. They play this Thursday. And then they play Monday night football when the Cardinals return to embarrass themselves on primetime. That would be back to back to back, right? Didn't they play on Thanksgiving? So Yeah. A lot of Mac Jones up in there. Primetime Patriots. Uh, look, if they do what they did on Thanksgiving going forward, then they are allowed to be in primetime because they put up a ton of points. Mac Jones was great. Ramondre has been great. So let's have some good offense here. And the Bills have done their part on their defensive injuries to ensure that the Patriots can actually move the ball. It does seem that way, and the game is in New England. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Buffalo minus four. The over-under is 43-and-a-half. Not a ton. Who'd Pretty, you take in this one? Um, I took New England. I, w I went on the Bills side, but I was yeah. really hemming and hawing here. Yeah, yeah, we've got our uh, little office pool going on. Pretty tight at the top. Very, very tight. 
So uh, this is a pretty big game right now. I believe the Patriots are sitting outside the playoff picture. And the Bills uh, are incredibly the five seed right now. Is that true? Yeah, because they're second in the division. That's right. So you would have the Chiefs in the one seed, the Dolphins, then the Titans, then the Ravens, then the Bills. Interesting. The Bills feel like a powerhouse, but right now their position is not such. Yeah, their defense has real. I mean, at the beginning of the year, they had what I believed was the best offense in the NFL and the best defense in the NFL. And their defense, week by week, has lost another key piece, another component. And right now... No Von Miller for a while. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they have had a lot of defensive line injuries recently and then a couple more this last week. Their secondary was already beat up. So this is a... This is kind of what you want for fantasy. You want Great offense, bad defense, like the like what we've seen from the Dolphins and the Lions, and I think what we're going to see for at least you know a couple more weeks here from the Bills. Yeah, the Bills' defense has struggled. You haven't seen it proportionally affect Josh Allen in a good way, though. Where, where Allen has had you know it's been a while since he's had monster performances. Uh, the elbow, hopefully, getting back into shape. You're going to play him. You're going to play Diggs, Gabe Davis. Since the bye week, only one top 30 finish, he is risky business. It's going to depend on your options. I don't think you have to play Gabe Davis every week. It's just depending on your choices. Like Zay Jones against Detroit That's in a great such, matchup. Such a good matchup. I can't I, – I would be playing him over Gabe Davis. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is completely a matter of your team, right? If, if, you're, if you're loaded and you are the favorite in the matchup, I'm going to play Zay Jones because I think his floor is certainly higher. But if um, if I'm in a shootout, if I'm playing against a great team, I'm going to have Gabe Davis in my lineup because he can do uh, what Zay Jones will do once or twice in a career. Gabe Davis will do it four or five times this year. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie is somebody that we said, you know, he's an option, probably not somebody you want to chase. Dawson Knox had the down week last week after a good week. There is a bit of a sometimes it's Gabe, sometimes it's McKenzie, sometimes it's Davis, sometimes it's Singletary. Beyond the digs. Yeah, I mean one of the one of the interesting players in this game. He's on my league of uh, record roster. He is currently on my bench, where I imagine he will stay. But a big question I'm sure people are going to have is Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary's been very very good. He's been on the field a ton. Um, we saw him win people championships down the stretch last year when they moved to 70% snap utilization for him, and he was basically just the dude. If you look since their bye week, 75, 74, 72, 72, 78, those are his snap percentages. He is their main running back on a great offense, but this matchup is awful. Schedule-adjusted uh, defense against running backs, the Patriots are number one in the league. If you just look at just the last six weeks, how have, how have they been recently? They're number two. It's a real shutdown situation here. Um, obviously, Singletary could catch the passes, but that leads me a little bit more confidence. If the Patriots are going to be able to score on the Bills, and I think they are, and you can't run on the Patriots, then that's where I think Gabe Davis, obviously Stephon Diggs is in, but Gabe Davis and Isaiah McKenzie, I have hope that they have – uh, good matchups uh, and a good week this week. I I think I would be fine, kind of sneaking both of them into my lineups. And this is the rare Thursday night football where we talk about you get an advantage when you play a player on Thursday night because you you have some more information for how your matchups going. But this is the rare Thursday night football where both teams are getting a full week. This isn't the short week, no practice. Uh, I'm banged up from injury. They're they're both coming off of Thanksgiving. Yeah, the Patriots will not have played on a Sunday in over a month. That's crazy. Yeah. Mac Jones, best game of the year last week. Quarterback seven, threw the ball downfield. It was nice to see. Ramondre is he's a wide receiver right now, and Damian Harris is not likely to play in this game. Ramondre is a must start. The last six weeks, Bills are 22nd against running backs. Um, they're the 30th in yards allowed. Uh, it's just an opportunity for Ramondre to be a foundational piece this week. Ramondre was going to be my start of the week, but I thought there's just no one out there that could possibly not be starting Ramondre. If, if, if he's on your bench, you're making a mistake. Now, Jacoby Myers plans to play in this game, and he would be the choice at wide receiver? Yes. 
for some reason he missed, would you take a shot on a Devontae Parker in a in a spot start? I would. Uh, I think that if Jacoby Myers is out, Devontae Parker becomes uh, very necessary for the offense, and you would expect that this is going to be a higher scoring game. Hunter Henry, chasing last week. Hunter Henry is not the guy. We talked about him on the waiver wire pickup show. I think he was third in my list of tight end waiver wire pickups. I had Evan Ingram ahead of him. It's not a great matchup no, for him. No, it's pretty bad, actually. That's the one area they haven't gotten worse. The Bills, number three in the last six weeks against tight ends. Yeah, it feels a little bit like chasing a little trappy. last week. Yeah, a little, little trappy. It, it, you know, the week prior, one target, one reception. So Yeah, yeah, and John Smith's been involved a little bit. He's not like he's the only tight end that could get targets. So uh, You know one thing I want to bring up before we what leave this What would you matchup? like to bring up? We've talked, you know, about Green Bay – uh, they drafted Christian Watson ahead of George Pickens, and what a mistake, and yada, yada. You realize that Tyquan Thornton was also, like, he like he was drafted ahead of George Pickens. That's, whoops. Is it? I mean, do we know enough yet? Well, we I, look, I, I, I think Tyquan Thornton's a good player. Uh, I don't think we know enough about Tyquan to say that he's a mistake or a bad pick in general, but I think we know enough from what we've seen from George Pickens to know that there was a mistake in not drafting him. Yeah, that could be true. I, it feels a little bit like Thornton might have drawn the short straw in terms of opportunity in year one with you know two quarterbacks, Parker and Myers, and two tight ends, and you know Pickens is he's he's the one. Yeah. So yeah. no, I, I I tend to agree, but uh, look at their their Pickens is Devontae Parker. In terms of a competitive catch player, Thornton, maybe we get to see that Christian Watson style speed on display uh, more often in the back half of the year. Check out all the rankings on the website if you want to see some start sit decisions with uh, the Thursday night game. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Quick break, back with some mailbag. Yeah, after this year, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick, um, and then Bourne will be gone too. Yeah. So hopefully he has an opportunity there. We'll see. It's hard for me to ever have like wide receiver confidence in New England. Yeah. If if Tyquan Thornton went to the Chiefs, uh, he was probably a good player. Fair enough. Uh, we need a mailbag drop. Oh, who's it going to be? Are you staring down the very nervous, sweaty Deucer's Alley? Uh oh, I've I've got this. Let's go to the Deucers cam here. Okay. We have a very important rule around the studio. Uh, yeah, the Deucers, the Deucers cam, cam. Thank you. And this is kind of how we operate on a lot of things. So I will just say, nose goes. Well, oh, Joe Al, Al Borland. Borland. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yes. Gristly. Yes. Very nice. Thank oh, you. Oh, how upset were you when you got to the nose last? Uh, pretty upset that I didn't even know what you were talking about. Yeah. No, that'll. I, I was more disappointed in not understanding what was going on. Mm. Wait, you, you won't forget now. Yeah, <laughs> you nose, did well. Nose goes. I thought that was pretty good for. Thanks. Yeah, to... I, I do edit with Grizz, but I think I overpowered him. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was not not the worst thing we've ever heard. That is a hundred percent true. All right. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website thefantasyfootballers dot com. Click the submit a question button. Or dial our voicemail hotline at 302-464-TFFB. Uh, let's jump in with a voicemail. Hey, Ballers. This is Jake from Seattle. I have a QB question. I don't know if I should play Kirk Cousins against the Jets or the QB on the other side, Mike White, against the Vikings. Thanks so much. Well, I think it's a really good question because – I did glance at Kirk Cousins as the start of the week this week. Yeah. Uh, the Jets, it, they're a good defense, but Kirk Cousins with, you know, Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook in a game that I think will be, it has the potential to be a higher scoring affair. The over under is 45. Minnesota, uh, they are three point favorites. It plays well at home. You know, I, I honestly, I feel like the answer should be Kirk Cousins. So. It's very difficult to take someone that you know is a very good quarterback for a long time like Kirk Cousins, who's playing for a good team with great weapons, and bench him for 
Um, a guy who has, what, four starts in his career? Uh, you haven't really seen him, and last week he had a pretty good matchup. But I think the answer here is actually Mike White because you look at the Jets' defense – on the season, uh, schedule adjusted, they are the third most difficult matchup for quarterbacks. Their defense has just been absolutely rolling. And I think the weapons that Mike White has with Garrett Wilson and uh, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, even Tyler Conklin, like it's, I, I think that he's going to do more than Kirk does. I just want to remind people Mike White burst onto the scene last year with a three-touchdown, 405-yard game and then came back. I guess he got hurt, but then in his next full game, he was 27th at the position. That's the risk you run with that. You yes. know, it's like it was almost like you last week rolling the dice with Taylor Heineke over a more known commodity in DFS where uh, you liked the situation, you liked the matchup, but, you know, you weren't – you didn't have the assurances that you would have with – starting a Herbert or a Lamar. Yeah, the floor is certainly lowest, I believe, on... It's the, lava. Uh, the, the, the floor is lava mm -hmm. with Mike White, and you want to avoid that floor, so I completely understand. And, and it's not like his ceiling is that much higher than Kirk Cousins. They, yeah, they I might don't think have it the, is higher. They might yeah. have the same ceiling. So by that, if you just go, well, one's got a lower floor, they got the same ceiling, go with the other guy. But I think probable outcome is a little bit higher with, with Mike White. Uh, Kirk Cousins on the season is the quarterback 13. Uh, he showed you, a well, that Dallas game was really, really not. They shouldn't have counted that in his game log. Yeah. But um, quarterback 7, 11, 16, and 9 the other four weeks. Should be a fun game. I hope we see what That's we want to see in that one. Yeah, I, think, I think we will because you have two teams playing for everything. They're great teams who are trying to maintain their position. I mean, the Jets are – really want to make the playoffs they should and could make the playoffs and here you have minnesota what are they like a half game or maybe one game out of the number one seed in the bye week so this is very important all right we have had a lot of questions come in on instagram and elsewhere on mr mike evans ah! now mike evans uh the question here do i sit him he's been poopy lately plus a bad history against the saints uh Mike Evans, nine targets last week, just two catches. Mike Evans hasn't scored a touchdown since week four, which is kind of his thing, right? Like, Not my, scoring touchdowns, yeah. No, scoring them, Jason. Not anymore. Last, Not since I traded for him. Last year he was I, – I did it in Dynasty, so we're riding together on this. 14 touchdowns last year, 13 the year before. Um. Marshawn Lattimore could be back, who, that, which has been the problem. That's the question. The The whole uh, history of Mike Evans against the Saints, it's not Mike Evans against the Saints. It's Mike Evans against Marshawn Lattimore. That's Marshawn Lattimore just beats him. He if, just flat out beats Mike Evans. He's Mike Evans' kryptonite. If I knew that he was going to miss, I would be willing to stone cold lock a touchdown guarantee this week for Mike Evans. Okay, so that's an if then if this then yeah touchdown. Okay, but um, so if if Lattimore is out, I think Evans is a lock this week f to score. Uh, he is very very overdue. If you're looking at Mike Evans versus Zay Jones, I don't think I'm willing to to. R I think oh, I'm going look. Mike Evans. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Mike Evans or George Pickens. I think I'm still going Mike Evans. That one. That one's. I mean, closer, but it's it's really hard to to bench Mike Evans. Mike Evans historically has been an up and down player. It sucks when it comes three weeks in a row. When you have three bad games in a row, you feel like this is the new normal. But Mike Evans has been getting open down the sideline, just like he always has. Uh, Tom Brady's been overthrowing him. I mean, there were four deep, awesome targets that would have changed Mike Evans' fantasy game last week and he was just a little off on each one of them so maybe that is maybe that is the new normal and Tom Brady's lost it and he's overcompensating and but I don't think Mike Evans has lost anything and it's not like you're benching Chris Godwin because of Tom Brady so I I, I think you have to just keep rolling with Mike Evans to get the good game how many games inside the top let's go uh 13 this year for Mike Evans yeah it's got to be two or three one wow 
Yuck. He had that big drop that would have changed one of his weeks. I'm just like if he doesn't score, he's got three touchdowns on the year, and he's only scored in two of the games. And this is a 14 touchdown, 13 touchdown player. You take the touchdowns away from Mike Evans, you don't have Chris Godwin. Like Godwin can exist in a PPR universe independent of touchdowns and make you very, very happy. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Twitter. What are some defenses we should consider stashing for playoffs oh, yes. if we have already made it? Yeah. Yeah. I love this question because this is where I've now f shifted my focus. I'm sorry, Andy. <laughs> you're, you're upset. Our matchup this last week did great things for me and terrible things for you. I pr I don't have the bye week locked up, <laughs> but like I should have the bye week locked up. Like I it, The podcasters couldn't see my facial expression, <laughs> but take that sound and apply whatever facial expression you want. Yeah. Um. So I can tell you that. If I have to listen to you equivocate, on things that are guaranteed anymore this year, <laughs> I'm going to jettison you into outer space. Okay, so Andy says I'm Just guaranteed for the buy. Act like a man, I, and walk forward with your chest out oh, my chest into the out. playoffs. I'm gonna get the bye week. My team's really good. I'm probably gonna win the championship. Ooh, I love to hear it. Well, just keep no, no, it going. No, this is this is your. This is you building me up. I love it. Thank You're you, Andy. You're supposed to say this. You like heard a, it, Foot Clan. Like he thinks man. I'm going to win the championship and get the bye week. But because I have the bye week, I know week I 16. Hope you lose. Oh, well, of course you do. So, have you seen my team though? Um, in uh, week 16, I have a waiver claim right now on the Titans. I am picking them up already. Um, I, I've got the Eagles as my normal defense. They've got a great uh, week 17 matchup for the championship, and week 15 is irrelevant to me with the bye week. Um, otherwise, who are you picking up? I mean, uh, the Chiefs have Denver in the final week of the year. It's delicious. They have Houston um, the week before or two weeks before. Uh, their defense, it, it you know puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and so Davis Mills or Kyle Allen and Russell Wilson, I'm targeting – People playing Denver, New Orleans, Houston, Houston. Uh, and the Rams. Those are the the targets yes. for me. I don't. The, the, I don't want to ride the medium to good defense against a. I don't want to be surprised with a potential. Like last week is a good example where, like Seattle, they've been pretty good. They they're at home and they're playing the Raiders, but the Raiders have like. They have explosiveness. They have good players. They have Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams. That's enough in a game to surprise. They ended up being zero points. It wasn't the right decision. Like in the playoffs, my personality is hundred percent is I'm going to play the medium to good defense against a great matchup, not the great defense against a bad matchup. One hundred percent. You you just named it exactly right. Houston, Denver, uh, the the Rams. Those are the three I'm going after. You mentioned a fourth. I don't remember who it was. New Orleans. Oh really? You think they're? I mean, they're that terrible. Bottom of the barrel. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're just they're, they're terrible. Um, uh, so those three or four matchups are who you're targeting, and focus on week 15 first. I mean, that sounds obvious, but you got to take it one week at a time. You don't get to week 16 uh, unless you win week 15. Unless you got the no. Bye that's. Week. I mean, that's a super important thing. Like, if you have to choose between you know sacrificing something for week 16 and 17. Do it. Sacrifice yeah. it. Go get the win. Yeah. Figure it out later. On the year. Oh, the Colts. Did we mention the Colts? As a team to target? Oh, as a team to play your defense against. That's Their I mean. offense is awful. Um, and then the Bears without fields would be another one. The last three weeks, or I'm sorry, the whole year, it's Rams, Colts, Texans as best matchups. The last eight weeks, it's Texans, Colts, Rams. <laughs> Same three teams. Yeah. Um, and then the Broncos. So... Uh, you know, Detroit on the road, another one to, to pay attention to. A little more risky, though. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and turn to a question from Andrew Bachelor. Okay. He's having a party. Rank them rest of season. Deontay, Traylon Burke, Zay Jones. Uh, I would flip that order. Zay Jones, Traylon Burks, Deontay Johnson. That's correct. I am 100% fine with that. Uh, looking at Joseph's question here, are you still starting Tony Pollard over Zeke if you have both? I don't know if I am. It's difficult. It, it is 
difficult, but I am probably. starting Pollard over probably, Zeke. Yeah. Uh, probably the rest of the season. This last week. Uh, he's had to- two, two weeks in a row that he's been pretty good. Who? Zeke. Oh, I, th- I think you could start both. Um, and obviously Pollard wasn't that good this last week. Uh, was the running back 39 down week. But he had 18 rushing attempts with Zeke active. So, like, that's enough for me. Like, you're Pollard, not. All- Pollard had 18 rushing attempts? Yeah. And that, Why don't I believe you? I know. I I I don't believe That's myself. That's two more than Zeke? I don't believe myself. Someone vet me, but no, I No, be- you're right. You're right. It's 18 for 60. Zeke had a, a really good game by way of, man, the fact that you can start both of these guys with confidence, that's the headline. Mm-hmm. Like, Z- Zeke, four out of his – I mean, his last four games started are top 13. I mean, you're going to we, – we talked about Zeke on the goal line. We all predicted a touchdown last week for Zeke. It came true. Um do you have That's, a Super Bowl pick right now? Uh, I like still. A, who do you think's going to win it? I still have the Bills winning it. Uh, okay. I th- I'm hoping that their defense gets healthier. Or I'll have to pivot come playoff time, but I still have the Bills winning it because they have done what I think a lot of teams have to do in order to win a championship, which is st- stair step, ladder, t- you know, take a step up, get a little further in the playoffs, have a bad beat, get a little further in the playoffs, and then finally take home the ring. Um, or is this you saying you think the Cowboys are going to win it? For some reason, I just they're my favorite right now. They're, I mean, I've been look, saying it for a few weeks, but I think I think that they have what it takes in the playoffs. And I, you know, maybe it's Philly. Yeah, the maybe NFC, it's San Francisco. I the, mean, those, those, those are the, those are the three. Those are the three teams. Sorry, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Um, those three teams are the best teams in the NFC to win the championship. Um. All right. Uh, CJ wants to know who do you trust more this week, Godwin or Jamar Chase? I trust Godwin, Godwin a lot more. I love Godwin. I think he. Did you look at Chase in DFS? Jamar Chase, I didn't. I can't do that. Not no, that, I can't either. That's, it, not, that's what, it, I just barely glanced at his name and moved on. If this was a GPP, some big tournament, then sure, because maybe people will be scared of him and you know his upside. But we're playing a cash game where we just got to beat two people. I'm not taking the injury risk with Jamar Chase. Speaking of which. I don't know if he, uh, the whole producer team even knows this. Oh yeah. But with Mike out the rest of the week, we have uh we've got Kyle stepping forward. Now, he's the resident DFS expert, host of the Fantasy Footballers DFS Pod. So we expect you to come in and win, Kyle the Borgogan. What do you have to say about that? I will give you no intel the entire week. You yeah. get nothing. Good. I don't need his your first stupid question, words. His first question was, do I have to submit a lineup when you guys do? Yeah. He's like, because, of course, listen, Footland, we, we come up with these lineups on Friday. We would all change these lineups Sunday morning. You should be submitting your lineups if you're playing DraftKings Sunday morning, taking advantage of the latest breaking news, the, the weather that was unexpected or the injuries that happened and getting those cheap guys in. We can't do that because we lock it in on Friday. Kyle's wanting us to lock ours in and him to submit one late Sunday morning. I'm gonna do, on. I'm going to do everything I can. To, to bring our first Deucer's Alley oh, Wheel yeah. of Shame yes. spin. Yes. So Come on, Andy. You and I are in it together this week. Yeah, let's do it. Let's I'm so confident it. in Kyle that, that I'll, I'll spin with him if he loses. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, Brooks, Guess who's doing the mailbag drop tomorrow for you? I, have will, one. I will not. Oh, oh man, I thought we could get the no, whole. Oh, he knows. He knows that this is oh, he wow. knows our... Uh, proclivity for so now al and kyle the borgogan will go down together i love you because i don't know if you knew this right Jason, I, I i actually have the perfect lineup this week oh so you, you so we have the same we one. probably have the same one wow because is yours perfect mine was perfect when i looked at it okay which was really good news because at first i made a lineup i was like this isn't perfect then i made some yeah, changes me too. and then i was like a couple tweaks this is perfect yeah yeah all right, uh, is Kadarius Tony droppable? This is an Instagram question from D. Uh, Perriera. Nailed it. <laughs> um, I so I I did drop Tony, but I I didn't drop him now. I dropped him last week to make room. When you've had this many hamstring problems and it's another hamstring issue, reaggravation seems like you're going to need multiple uh, weeks and more time. Andy Reid has said he's day to day, and that they will be cautious. It seems like like I think the right move is is to drop him in redraft and move on and do what you need to do. Pick up a defense to win a championship. Um, His path was oh, it was predicated rough. on no juju 
No Hardman. It was perfect. Banged up MVS. And that would have been the time for him to kind of like carve out a permanent role in this offense. Right now it is, I mean, it's no different than starting. Like when he comes back, flip a coin, him or Sky Moore. I yeah, mean, and, and, that's the problem. Well, and, and him and Sky Moore will be splitting. When Kadarius Tony comes back, they are not going to throw him in any kind of snap count situation with his hamstrings that you can start in fantasy football. So that means maybe he's not back this week. Okay, well, then maybe he comes back active the following week, but you cannot play him, and he's not going to do enough in that game to prove that you could play him the following week. So now we're talking three weeks, at least a month before you can actually have the confidence to start him in your lineup. So, yeah, I, I, I think you should drop him. I, I still absolutely love his upside, love what he could do with this offense. I think he's a great dynasty asset. Now might be a, a better time to kick the tires on a trade for him because it's not looking as great with his hamstring injury. But, no, in, in redraft, I'm moving on. We did get one more update that uh, I don't know if it was really in question for your fantasy rosters, but Kyle Pitts is officially out for the year, according to Arthur Smith. Um, we can all be hoping and praying for a better, brighter future physically slash fantasy for Kyle Pitts. A couple of reminders before the end of the show. Christmas parties are coming. Oh, yeah. We we rarely mention it, but I do. You know, you're looking at gifts. You're looking at things to check out. We've got shirts at shopballers.com, including the draft day is my Christmas shirt. Ooh, that's classic. Which is a delight. You want to represent uh, some fantasy football fandom at your Christmas party. Dinner um, butter shirt because, you know, we got Christmas uh, dinners. and Youth is Luth, Pity City. We've got uh, the mug that you can sip your hot chocolate in. No, the one I'm using right now. So shopballers.com if you want to check that out. Well, that's a good sound. That's yeah. a real good sound. So all of the shirts and everything over there. You guys wearing any of our shirts today? No, no, no. Gift cards, too, if you want to get one for somebody you love. That's fair. That's fair. Thank you, Al. You really stifled my trajectory towards an insult for you. Wait, I see your hand over the button, but I want to ask you this final question that I see from Instagram from Zach Zander, because I love the question. Garrett Wilson or Christian Watson? rest of season Garrett Wilson okay same upside touchdown wise I think maybe mm, better baseline PPR okay yeah both explosive yeah I mean, Garrett Wilson was the higher draft capital guy right he was quarterback situation uh, I Four. lean I mean I lean Wilson okay there you go uh both good that'll do it both good. Very fun. Very fun to have the, the rookies starting to emerge and trying to figure out which ones you need to, like, a handful of these guys have been on my team and then off of my team, and that's the worst. Like, yeah. Traylon Burks in the beginning of the year, Christian Watson in the beginning of the year. I had those guys on there. You just, you didn't have bench room to kind of hold them if you were fighting for wins. Yep, yeah, and if you're winning, you just pick up Christian Watson and have him on your team, head into the bye week, you know. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. No big deal. All right, that is it for the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Back tomorrow, football time. Don't miss it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.